All right then gang, so currently we've made a few small components in this library, a grid layout system, some color classes and other utility classes for things like margin, padding, border radius, font sizes and opacity. And already our output CSS file is lacking huge. You can see how many lines of CSS code this is if we scroll right to the bottom of the file. Now, the more components or utility classes that we make, the bigger and bigger this file is going to get, and the file size is going to increase as well. Now, the thing is, we will probably never use all of these CSS rules and classes in our websites or web pages. So it seems like a massive file to load into a website when we might only use 10% of it at a pinch. So in this lesson, I'll be showing you how we can set up a workflow whereby any compiled CSS rules that are not used in our HTML files are purged or removed from the final CSS file. So in our case, only the classes we use in this HTML file right here will be in the final CSS file. I've deleted the other index.html file just so we can preview which classes are removed and how small the final file will be when we just use this HTML file. So to do this purging and to integrate it into our development process, we'll be using another plugin for Gulp called Purge CSS. So first of all, let's open up a terminal and install this plugin. So type npm install gulp hyphen purge CSS and then double dash save hyphen dev to save it to our dev dependencies and then hit enter to install it. So then now that's installed, we just need to add it to our gulp file. First up, we need to require the purge CSS plugin at the top of the file. So let's do that. And then we need to incorporate it into our build styles function. And the way we do this is just by chaining it into this process using another pipe function. So after we use the SAS compiler plugin here, we can tack on another pipe method. And then inside that, we can use the purge CSS plugin. So we invoke this plugin and then pass it an argument, which is going to be an object. And inside the object, we need a content property. Now, this content property tells the plugin which files to look in to determine what CSS rules we're actually using for our website. So this value will be an array of paths to files relative to this file. In our case, I want it to look in any top level HTML files because we might create more in the future. So I'll pass in a path which is asterisk, meaning any file name, then .html. So that's going to look for any file in the root level of our project, and that includes this homepage HTML file right here. So this plugin is now going to look in our HTML files and see what classes and rules we're actually using. And then it's going to look at our compiled CSS and take out any rules that we don't use, meaning that the output file is going to be significantly smaller in file size. So since we've changed this file now, we need to cancel out of the current gulp process and run it again. So let's do that. So now that's done, we can take a look inside the index.css file, the output CSS. And if we scroll down here, we can see the file now is much, much smaller. Now it's only 224 lines long, whereas before it was nearly 4,000 lines long. So that is a massive reduction. So the gulp purge CSS plugin has looked through our HTML file. It's looked at the different classes and styles that we need from the source files and then it's purged all the ones we don't need. So in the output, we don't have all those extra classes that we don't use in our HTML file, which is much, much better. Now, what's going to happen if we go to the home page and we add in a class that we didn't use before? For example, if I change this to navbar secondary and save it, what's going to happen? Because we didn't use the navbar secondary class before. So when it purged our styles, it would have purged this class from it, but it's watching our CSS, right? So maybe it's updated it. Well, let's take a look. If we search for navbar hyphen secondary, then we're not going to get any results. It's not worked. So why is that? Why is it not added it to this CSS file? Well, remember, that's all to do with our gulp file. We only rebuild when this SAS is changing. So it's not currently looking at our HTML. And when we change our HTML file, it's not rebuilding the styles. 
and it's not therefore repurging the styles or re-adding the styles in that we need. So the way we can do that is just by passing in another argument or another element rather to this array and that is going to be a path to whatever html page we want to watch now i want to watch all of them so asterisk.html and now if i save this i need to rerun the gulp task so i'm going to cancel out of this process and run gulp again and when we do that you'll notice first of all if i go to index.css because we've just rebuilt when we ran gulp if i search for navbar secondary, we're gonna find it now, right? And if we take a look at this in a browser, it works. However, if I now make a change, if I go to the home page and change this to navbar primary instead and save it, now if I go to the index.css, because it was watching that file, we have navbar primary and it's purged out the secondary one instead. So this is all worked behind the scenes. As we make changes to our HTML now, it's updating behind the scenes and it's updating the CSS for us. And if we take a look at this in a browser, we can see now we have the primary navbar, which is awesome. And that is gonna be much better for production, having this much lower file size now for our CSS.